Hello good people of the internet and welcome to the second installment of my series on how to build a photography website using WordPress and the fantastic theme Generate Press. In today's video I will be showing you how to initially set up a photo gallery. This will include the creation of a custom post type to keep everything neatly organized and a block element in Generate Press. I mentioned the initial setup because by the end of this video the gallery won't be fully styled yet. There's only so much I can record and edit in one week, but we will have laid the foundations that will allow us to continue with the design or in next week's video. You better get subscribed. For those not in the know, I am rebuilding my photography website using all the expertise I gained during the last year or so. My previous site wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but there were certain things I desperately wanted to bring up to scratch. What finally pushed me over the edge was that my galleries, for whatever reason, broke. There was literally not a single image to be seen on my website. And just to prove that I am starting fresh again, here's me resetting the WordPress installation. I used the plugin because I was too lazy to reinstall WordPress properly. But it still counts. If you followed any of my previous WordPress guides, you will know that I am massively fond of the theme Generate Press. It's fast, clean and an absolute joy to work with. And Generate Press has seen some game changing developments in the last year or so, making this video all the more necessary. There is one caveat to my use of Generate Press though. I use the premium version and just about everything I am about to do can't be done using the freely available version only. The good news is that Generate Press Premium only costs 59 US dollars a year or 249 US dollars for a lifetime subscription. And you can use the same subscription on up to 500 sites. Despite all the things I get up to, I'm still off that number by just a slight amount. A plugin that is in my opinion required when working with Generate Press, and I will be using it in all of my guides is Generate Blocks. As the name suggests, it comes from the same developer and has a tight integration with Generate Press. And again, the premium version unlocks so many features, making it a must have for me. It will cost you another 39 US dollars per year, but the $100 annual cost for both Generate Press and Generate Brox is definitely worth it. With that out of the way, let's start creating, or, you know, let's start installing plugins so we can start creating later. We'll first want to install the free Generate Press theme, which can be done by clicking on the Add New button under a appearance and then clicking on themes. Once installed, you can log into your account on generatepress.com and download the GP Premium zip file. You will want to upload this file as a zip file, there's no extracting needed, in the WordPress plugin menu item. Add a new plugin and instead of searching for it, you want to click on the upload plugin button. Once installed and activated, click on the configure option. Here you will have to enter your license key, which is also found in the generatepress.com account. While we're in here, we might as well enable the modules we might be using. I'm going for blog, copyright, disable elements, elements, menu plus, spacing, and the typography module. Oh, and the colors. Any modules you might not need in the future can be deactivated again as they use up just a few resources. The next plugin we truly must have installed is Generate Blocks. You will once again have to first install the free version by searching it in the plugin directory. It should be the first result if you enter Generate Blocks. Hit that install button and then activate it. Next, the premium version can be uploaded. The zip file can be downloaded from the Generate Blocks website um, by logging into your premium account. Once installed and activated, you can enter your license in the settings. The other settings can be left as is. With that, we've got the basics covered. Generate Press is our theme, which will define the overall look of our site. And using Generate Blocks, we will later refine that look and make it our own. 
Now that that is done, we can move on to the next bit of prep work, setting up pods. If you take a look at our menu on the left hand side, you can see that we have the ability to add posts and pages. We won't be using either for our galleries though. We could set up individual pages, but that would mean that for every newly uploaded photo, you'd have to edit the whole page or multiple pages if it belongs in multiple categories. What we want is something more dynamic. We could use posts and define categories for individual galleries such as landscape, nature or portraits, but that would mess up our ability to easily create a blog in the future, which is something we will do, get subscribed. So we don't want that. What we want is something like posts, but not posts. That's what the plugin Pods can do for us and that plugin will be installed now. Once Pods has been installed and activated, we can create a new pod called Photos. This pod will be a custom post type. With it created, head into the advanced options and enable the archive page. You will also want to scroll all the way down and enable the featured image. Save the pod and head back into the Manage Fields tab. Here we are going to create a new field with the label Featured Image URL. And I suggest you make it required so that it never gets forgotten. Save the pod to finish this setup. Next, we are going to need some categories such as landscape or street or nature. For that, we are once again going to add a new pod. This pod will, however, be a custom taxonomy and we are going to call it gallery. Once created, select the advanced options tab and scroll all the way down. In the final box, associate this taxonomy with the post type photos. Save this setting before moving on. You might have noticed that we now have a new option in the left hand menu titled photos. From there, we can view our photos, add new photos and add galleries. It's the last option we are going to select first. In here, you can create the gallery you will later want to display on your website. I'm starting things off simply by just creating one named landscape. What I want you to do next is to view that gallery. You won't see any photos yet and will be greeted by a big fat nothing found. But the content isn't why we're here. What we want to do is take a look at the URL. You will see that my URL ends with question mark gallery equals landscape. I don't like the look of that, so I'm going to change it. Head into the settings and select the option permalinks. Here I'm going to choose the option post name. If we now take another look at the gallery, you will see that the URL has been changed to slash gallery slash landscape. Much better. I guess it's about time we added our first photo. To do so, simply select the option Add New under our new photos post type. The photo itself is uploaded as the featured image and here's the thing I'm not quite happy with yet, but I couldn't find another way of doing it. Once uploaded, copy the URL on the right hand side. Now paste that URL in the field Featured Image URL. You'll find it towards the bottom of the editor. Finish things off by giving the photo a fitting title and if you want, you can also add some text. There are ways of displaying it in your gallery, but that I think will be covered in a later video. Before you publish the photo, make sure to select one or more gallery and then you're done. We can now take a look at our landscape gallery once again and voila, there's our photo we just added. But I think you will agree with me when I say that this page looks nothing like a gallery. We will now create something that was only recently introduced in Generate Press Premium, a content template block element. These will allow you to style a category archive and in our case the gallery is such an archive. As mentioned, we will be going through the possibilities in the next video, but to get started I recommend you insert a template. And the template I recommend is the most basic one. This template contains a bunch of blocks which will be dynamically filled with the data provided by each photo. The post title field will be the title we gave our photo not a minute ago. The big black box you can see will be the photo itself. Everything else provided by this template I do not want. The field where it says author name would show my name but 
as it's only me uploading photos, I don't need it. I also don't want to show the date in this location, so I'll just delete the whole container. I'm also not sure whether I want to include any text to go with the photo, so for the time being, the bottommost content can go too. Finally, the terms button towards the top would display tags, and my photos don't have any tags. Delete, delete, delete. This will now be our basic structure. All that's left to do is to assign it to our galleries. Under location, select the option Photo Gallery Archive and leave it set to all galleries. There's two more things to do. When we click on the photo, we don't want to open it in a blog layout. I'd much rather view it in a light box. Remember the featured image URL from earlier? Here's where it will be used. Select the dynamic image block and link it to the custom field name titled featured underscore image underscore URL. The second adjustment will let our Lightbox plugin, which we will be installing shortly, know that it should be used. To do so, select the container in which the dynamic image block itself is placed. In the advanced options, assign the CSS class wp-block-image. You can now update or publish the block if you haven't done so yet. We've now got everything prepared for our Lightbox. All that is needed is to actually install it and enable it. Previously, I recommended the WP Featherlight Lightbox plugin. That is no longer the case. WP Featherlight remains a fantastic and fast option, but it is reliant on jQuery. Since digging in deeper into how WordPress and GeneratePress work, I've been trying to minimize the dependencies on jQuery my sites have. Luckily, I found an option that works just as well is lightweight and is written in vanilla JavaScript. It's called Lightbox for the default gallery and image block. Bracket open, simple, lightweight and no lock-in. Brackets closed. But you can simply search for JavaScript Lightbox to find it. It's the one by Johannes Kinnast. This plugin doesn't have any settings or even a block. As its name suggests, it works with the default blocks included in WordPress. All you have to do is link an image to the media itself and it will be opened in the Lightbox. If the plugin breaks or you prefer to not use it anymore, you can simply uninstall it and your site will keep working. Your galleries and images won't be affected. One more plugin is needed and that one is called Code Snippets. The reason for code snippets is that the Lightbox plugin will only work in posts with image or gallery blocks and not in archives. Remember, our galleries are essentially category archives, but that's a good thing because usually you won't want the plugin running on your whole site and it just saves a bit of bandwidth. A contact form, for example, doesn't need to load this plugin's JavaScript, but in our case, we want it to load in the archives. To remedy this issue, we are going to add a short snippet that will run the plugin script everywhere. I'll leave a link to a blog post where the code will be published in a pinned comment. This snippet only needs to run on the front end, so we are going to select that option and then activate it. If you now take yet another look at our gallery, we can see that the light box is working when we click on an image. It's nice when things come together like this, isn't it? My throat is beginning to get quite raw and that is a clear indicator that this video has been going on for long enough. As I said in the introduction, our gallery doesn't look anything like a gallery yet, but that's fine because I know how to change that. What we do have in place are the basics and these will give us a platform to build on and that we will be doing. So get subscribed. If you do want to prepare yourself for what is coming, I suggest you start uploading the images you want in your portfolio, all the while adding them to one or more category. If this video has helped you out, please do hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And if you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice to make it extra impactful. All right, I've been Liam Alexander Coleman and it has been just about enough from me for one day. You have not been Liam Alexander Coleman, but I will see you in the next one. Bye.